You remember the conversation that we had together about the EMT 250? It was uh, a couple months ago. Well, this is the RAM board of the EMT 250. And I think I said in the video that I could replace it uh, with a total of seven chips. Well, here's the deal. Some of my more astute students out there may have noticed that my voice is currently reverberating and it's being processed by none other than this device down here. See? <laughs> what have we done? How are we hearing the reverb when the RAM board is sitting on the table? Well, as you can see, we have replaced the RAM board with a new one. Now here's the deal. I uh, thought I would need my thinking cap for this presentation, but uh, I can't breathe with my thinking cap on, so I'm going to take it off now. <clears throat> That's a lot better. Oh, here we go. Now, here we go, here we go. So, class is starting. Sit in your seats, please. Now, uh, I'm gonna explain how this RAM board works and how we are going to replace it with a new RAM board. So, first and foremost, the EMT 250 has a RAM board with a total of 128K RAMs uh, and 128 chips. They are arranged uh, like so, 8K by 16 bits. Now each one of these RAMs is a 91L02 1K by one static RAM. They have separate input and output pins. So there's an input pin and an output pin. There's a 10-bit address that is needed to access all 1,024 spots in the RAM. There is a chip enable signal that selects which RAM the computer is interfacing with, and the chip enable is active when it's low. So that's why there's a line above this chip enable. There's also a read-write pin on each RAM, and the write is active when it's low. So when the read-write pin gets a low from the computer, that means that the RAM is in the write cycle. So we decided we're going to replace all 128 of these with two 6264 8K by 8 static RAMs. There's a couple hurdles, though, that we need to overcome. One is that there's a common input-output pin on the RAM. It's more like this. There's one pin for both data going in and data going out, as opposed to this chip, which was separate pin for in, separate pin for out. And the reason why this is important is because the EMT has separate input and output data lines feeding these chips. So we can't just join them together. We have to figure out a way to, to send data in and out without completely confusing the machine. Are you with me? Are you with me? Um, the other thing is that this is 8,196 bits tall, while this one is 1,024 bits tall. You remember I said we need a 10-bit address to access all 1,024 locations in this RAM. Well, we need a 13-bit address to access all 8,196 locations in this RAM. The EMT gives us, oops, spoiler alert, the EMT gives us a 10-bit address and it counts from all zeros to all ones, so zero up to 1,023, but it's 1,024 values. Um, our task is to figure out how we're going to get these three additional most significant bits. So 
I figured something out, but first I need to explain the chip enable circuit because it's pertinent to this problem. So the EMT accesses each row of RAM individually at different times. And the way it does that is it sends a low to the chip enable pin of all these RAMs first. So what that means is that these all have a zero on their chip enables, while the rest of them all have ones. So each one of these ones represents a row of RAMs, while this lone zero represents this bottom row. So this one is active because it's getting a low on its chip enable pin. So the computer will then uh, increment the chip enable so that we are now accessing the second row. So now the second row is going to get a zero on its chip enable pins while every other row is still high and this first row down here is going to go from zero to high. And it's going to do that a total of eight times. So for the, the third chip enable, that's going to be this row. The chip enable is going to go low while this one is going to go high. This one was already high and the rest of these were already high. And then for the fourth one, this one's going to go low, all the rest of them are high. Then for the fifth one, this one's going to go low, all the rest are high. Sixth, this is low, rest are high. Seventh, this is low, rest are high. The final eighth, this is low, and the rest are high. So that's how the computer in the EMT is going to access each row of these RAM chips. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an eight to three line decoder chip it's called a 74148, and you can see its truth table here. The truth table is what we use to decide if a chip is going to work for our circuit and what the inputs and outputs look like in, uh, for a given state. So you can immediately see it's actually very similar to the chip enable diagram I drew here. So for the chip enable diagram, you can see we start with low on the far right, everything is uh, high, and then it just kind of goes in a diagonal line. But if you look over here on our truth table, if we, we have seven inputs, and if you have the far right input low, um, then it's going to generate three lows for our output. Oops. And that is going to be our three most significant bits for chip enable zero. So since these are low, all we're doing is counting up to 1,023, which is just the default state for the EMT. Now, the next line, which is line number four, you can see that when the sixth, well, sorry, it's actually the seventh input is low, and the eighth one is high. The rest of these don't really matter, but in the EMT's case, they will all be high. Uh, we're going to generate a low, low, and a high. So that means we're now going to count to 2048. So for the next row, we're going to have all highs, a low, and then two highs. It's going to generate a low, high, low. And then we're going to have uh, four highs, low, then three highs, and that's going to generate a low, high, high, and so forth. And it's going to do this all the way until we have three highs. So when the chip enable uh, pins of this RAM board look like this. Um, so this one is selected and the rest of them are high. Our address, our most significant bit is going to be a one. Our second most significant bit is going to be a one. And our third most significant bit is going to be a one. So if all of these are one, then, then we have counted, we have successfully counted to 8,196. So this 74148 is taking already existing signals from the EMT, the chip enables 0 through 7, and it's essentially 
decoding them or converting them into three signals, which are what we need to get our three most significant bits. Now you might notice there's a couple other columns here. Well, this is the enable column. And we want this, this 74148 to constantly be working. Like we never want it to turn off. So we're just gonna tie it low because it's when enable is low, the chip is active. When it's high, the chip is not active. So it's just gonna be tied to ground. These two outputs, we don't care about. They're not doing anything for us. So we are going to leave them alone. So we figured out our address problem, but we haven't figured out our common I.O. So what we're going to do for the common I.O. is we're going to use an octal buffer, which has tri-state outputs. Now tri-state outputs means that it's either going to output a zero, a one, or it's going to be in the high impedance state, meaning it's essentially just completely gone from the circuit. And we are going to use this read-write signal that the EMT is already generating, we're going to use this to select whether this LS244 chip, this is the logic diagram of it, we're going to use this signal to select whether this is allowing data to go from its inputs to its outputs. And what that does uh, is it allows us to take the input signal from the EMT, we're going to route it to all the inputs of this LS244. Now, granted, we need two of these because there's, um, there's 16 inputs, but whatever. So we're gonna take um, the inputs from the EMT computer and we're gonna send them directly to the inputs of this chip. And when we are in the write mode, when write is low, we want those input signals to come out of this chip and go into our RAM. So our RAM is going to also have this write enable line, and it will be, so this is essentially telling our RAM, hey, we're ready to write, but we're also gonna put our write enable line on this enable pin. Wow, that's horrible. Of the LS244. So the computer tells the RAM that it's ready to write. So it sends a write enable line, or write enable signal, it's low, so now the RAM is being told that we're in write mode. Now these LS244s are now being told they're in write mode. So when this is active low, our output is going from a tri-state high impedance output, which again means it's not part of the circuit at all. It goes to, it goes to, <laughs> wait, wait, where was I? Sorry. Oh yeah, when write enable is low, um, th this chip is active, so it's inputs, which again, are the inputs coming from the EMT, its inputs are gonna be sent to its outputs. When it's high, it's in the high impedance mode, so the inputs are not being sent to the outputs. The outputs are essentially disconnected from the entire circuit. And at that point, we are in the read mode because our write enable is now high. So the RAM is ready to be read, and these are not passing the inputs to the outputs. So our output line, can be tied directly to the in-out line of this RAM chip. So essentially, our input lines have to be um, buffered with the tri-state buffer. Um, we can't tie our input lines from the EMT directly to the chip, but we can tie our output lines directly to the chip. So by doing all of this, we're gonna have two 6264 RAMs, which means which means we're going to have 128K RAMs, just like the original. But instead of having 128 of them, we're going to have two. See, this is 128, but we're only going to have two. Um, we're going to have two LS244s to help um, send our inputs to the input of the RAM at the correct time. And then we're gonna have a 74148 to help us decode the chip enable pins that the EMT is already generating um, into a three uh, number, oh, sorry, into three signals that we are using as our most significant bits on the address line. Um, and it works, you can hear 
Um, hello. Check one, two. Yes, yes, yes. Check it, Iku. Oh, boy. Wow. So I'll just kind of show you. Um, here's our two RAM chips. This is our lower byte of eight bits. This is our upper byte of 16 bits. We've got an LS244 up here. We've got an LS244 down here. And we have the 74148, which is decoding the chip enable into our three most significant address bits. And it works great. Obviously, this is a prototype. That would, well, that would not be good if I just sent this back to the client like this. But um, I am making it into a nice board uh, that will be secure. There are no longer 2,048 connections that we have to worry about. There's just the connections of these chips. Um, yeah, it's easier to debug. It's, uh, it's, just, it's just better. This is bony. No, this is bony. This is not bony. This is bony, not bony. 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 Ooh. Not bony. Bony. Not bony. Um, I'm losing my microphone. Here we go. It's honestly all I have. Um, what time is the bell ring? How much time do we have? We're just going to do silent reading for the rest of the bell. We're going to do silent reading for the rest of the bell. So please um, get out your books and start reading. And then it's going to be lunch. After lunch, uh, there's going to be recess. After recess, we've got gym class. And then we have band practice, marching band practice, after, um, what was it, after school. Um, wait, what did you say? From 3 to 9 p.m., we have marching band practice. Um, I want you to write a 10-page paper about this EMT 250, and it's due tomorrow. Um, I want size 8 font, single-spaced. Um, you have to write it on a typewriter. Um, I mean, really, that's pretty much it. Let me know if you have any questions. I can't see you because we're filming this at a different time that you're viewing it, so if you're raising your hand, I won't be able to answer your questions. So um, thank you. Have a nice day. Class dismissed.